Hello everyone. Let's continue our dentine sessions. So today's video is about types of uh, dentine. Uh, so I'll be explaining all the types using this picture and we have some uh, special features of dentine such as incremental lines of von Ebner's lines and contour lines of oven and Tom's granular layer. So let's get into details of all the types of dentine and other features. So let's start with peritubular dentine. So all these questions are very very important because these are commonly asked short notes uh, in university exam. So let it be peritubular dentine, intertubular, pre-dentine, oronoblastic process, primary dentine, secondary dentine, tertiary dentine, mantle dentine, circumpulpal dentine, interglobular dentine and we have contour lines of Owen, Von Ebner's lines and Tom's granular layer. So all are short notes and uh, it's quite easy to understand uh, from this picture. So always try to understand the concept with a picture in your mind. So it will be easy to reproduce the same into your answer sheets. So let's start with peritubular dentine. So peritubular dentine, the dentine that immediately surrounds the dentinal tubules. So hope you can see this brown color which immediately surrounds. This is the dentinal tubule and this is the odontoblast. This is the dentinal tubule, odontoblastic the processes and the tube the dentine which is immediately surrounds the dentinal tubules this brown color dentine is known as peritubular dentine which is highly mineralized than the intertubular dentine okay intertubular dentine is between the tubules as the name suggests it is between the tubules it is more mineralized than the intertubular dentine and it is twice as thick in the outer dentine than the inner dentine and this calcified tubules wall has an inner organic lining which is known as lamina limitans okay lamina limitans which is the lamina limitans which is the inner organic lining of peritubular dentine calcified tubule okay so that is peritubular dentine now we have the second one that is intertubular dentine so intertubular dentine which is located between the dentinal tubules okay so between the dentinal tubules we have intertubular dentine which is less mineralized than the peritubular dentine which is just uh, adjacent or just surrounding the tubules so one half of its uh, volume is organic matrix especially collagen fibers and this is seen between the zones of peritubular dentine so we know we have peritubular dentine here and here this is just two odontoblastic processes we have many odontoblastic process so between peritubular dentine we have odontoblastic uh, sorry intertubular dentine this violet uh, color i have mentioned the interglobular Mm, sorry intertubular dentine lots of confusing dentine is there so i'm talking about intertubular dentine which is between the peritubular dentine okay and the fibrils the collagen fibrils ranges from 0.5 to 0.2 micrometer in diameter so hydroxyapatite crystals are formed along the fibers with their long axis oriented parallel to the collagen fibers so that's how hydroxy hepatite crystals are formed through this fibers so it is uh, well mineralized but not uh, up to uh, peritubular dentine and it provides tensile strength to uh, strength to dentine that is its uh, function now we have pre-dentine okay so next is pre-dentine this is pre-dentine so we finished peritubular dentine and intertubular dentine now we have pre-dentine pre-dentine we know which is the first dentine to be formed which is located adjacent to pulp where the dental papilla or the future pulp will be 
giving rise to the first layer of dentin which is known as pre-dentin and which is not mineralized and these the collagen fibers which undergo mineralization at the pre-dentin and the pre-dentin then becomes dentin and a new layer of pre-dentin forms circumpulpally okay so pre-dentin once it is mineralized it becomes dentin and then at the same time there will be new layer of dentin that is pre-dentin will be formed so pre-dentin is not mineralized one it is a first formed dentin which is adjacent to dental pulp okay so that is pre-dentin now we have odontoblastic processes so odontoblastic process is the cytoplasmic extension of odontoblast this is the odontoblastic process so we know odontoblastic process which is entering into enamel which is known as enamel spindle hope you remember what is enamel spindle so enamel spindle is odontoblastic process which cross the DEJ and which end up in enamel so this is the enamel part okay it's because this is DEJ so that is enamel spindle we learned uh, in last session and lamina limitans was a organic layer of peritubular dentin so the odontoblast which resides in the peripheral pulp at the pulp pre-dentin border and their process extends into dentinal tubules okay so the process extends into dentinal tubule this odontoblast reside in the peripheral pulp at pulp pre-dentin border so we have pulp here so hope you can understand the concept we have pulp here this is the pulp okay this is enamel this portion is enamel so odontoblast is between pulp and pre-dentin border and this process is cytoplasmic extension and the process are largest in diameter near the pulp here it is the largest and it goes thinner as it moves towards the dentin and the cell bodies are 7 micrometer in diameter and 40 micrometer in length so that was about odontoblastic process the next one is primary dentin which is uh, dentin that is formed prior to eruption of tooth and which is secreted at relatively higher rate and which constitute major part of dentin in the tooth and mandel dentin is the first formed dentin in the crown underlying DEJ that is dentino enamel junction which is regular in structure dentin tubules form S shaped as a result of directional movement of odontoblast uh, whereas the circumpulpal dentin forms the remaining primary dentin or bulk of the tooth okay so mandel dentin and um, circumpulpal dentin so the fibrils are much smaller in diameter and are more closely packed together and the slightly more mineral content than in mandel dentin for circumpulpal dentin okay so whereas a secondary dentin secondary dentin is formed after root completion and uh, there is narrow band of dentin bordering the pulp which contain fewer tubules than primary dentin and there is usually a bend in the tubules where the primary and secondary dentin interface so since it is formed after eruption the odontoblast slightly change directions which contributes to the bending of dentinal tubules so primary dentin is before primary dentin is uh, uh, before the eruption of tooth whereas the secondary dentin after completion of root okay now we have tertiary dentin tertiary dentin is what uh, we are inducing dentin formation when there is a pathological uh, cavity which is very close to pulp where the normal restoration is not possible so what we do is we place a medicament on the uh, dentin surface which is very close to uh, pulp so after two or three weeks there will be dentin formation which we are inducing from the underlying pulp the mesenchymal cells which induce cells the cells of um, this mesenchymal cells which produces odontoblast and dentin 
and there will be a layer of dentin formed a new dentin formed which uh, seals off or which keep a boundary uh, between the outer surface from the pulp so such type of dentin is known as tertiary or reparative dentin okay so when pathologic process or operative procedures when these odontoblasts are cut uh, these undergo uh, survival or sometimes these odontoblasts will die depending upon the extent of injury so if they survive this dentin is produced which is known as reactionary or regenerated dentin so killed odontoblasts are replaced by migration of undifferentiated undifferentiated cells arising in the deeper layer of pulp to the dentin interface so newly differentiated odontoblasts then begin deposition of reparative dentin to seal off the zone of injury as a healing process initiated by pulp so there will be sealing of the injury so that is why it is known as reparative dentin and now we have mantle dentin okay so already we seen mantle dentin it is a first layer of primary dentin to be deposited and which is that is why it is the oldest dentin and produced adjacent to enamel in the crown which can be recognized by characteristic thick fan shaped collagen fibers and these fibers run perpendicular to dj okay whereas a circum pulpal dentin which is formed after the layer of mantle dentin has been deposited and which constitute major part of primary and secondary dentin the hydroxy apatite crystals are deposited on the surface within the fibrils and continue to grow as mineralization proceeds which results in increased mineral content of dentin now we have incremental lines of von ebner so the incremental lines of von ebner or uh, imbrications line appear as fine lines or striations in dentin so similar lines we have seen in enamel which are they the incremental lines of rhesus okay so the similar line in dentin is known as von ebner's line so these lines reflect the daily rhythmic recurrent deposition of dentin matrix as well as a hesitation in the daily formative process so this is the incremental lines the deposition when this mineralization happens there will be minerals deposited as additive method it cannot uh, grow itself there should be com continuous addition of minerals so uh, those lines is known as von ebner's line so this is in the dentin whereas in incremental lines of uh, rhesus in enamel okay so the course of these lines indicate the growth pattern of dentin and some of these incremental lines are accentuated because of the disturbance in the matrix and remineralization process such lines are known as contour lines of owen so these lines represent hypocalcified bands so why it is uh, different from von ebner's this is a accentuated Uh, accentuated uh, because of the disturbance in the matrix and remineralization process so accentuated incremental lines are known as contour lines of owen and we have another structure uh, which is neonatal line where this is seen the deciduous teeth when the first permanent molar the prenatal and postnatal dentin is separated by an accentuated contour line which is known as neonatal line okay so with that we have seen in dentin also when the separation between the prenatal and postnatal enamel the similarly prenatal and postnatal dentin is separated by neonatal line this line reflects the abrupt change in environment that occurs at birth okay so the dentin matrix formed prior to birth is usually better quality than that formed after birth and now we have interglobular dentin okay interglobular dentin so before we had seen intertubular dentin now we have interglobular dentin 
So interglobular tendon sometimes mineralization of tendon begins in small globular areas that fail to fuse into homogeneous mass. So this results in zone of hypomineralization between the globules. So these zones are called as interglobular dentin which is forms in crowns of teeth in the circumpulpal dentin just below the mandel dentin. Okay, just below the mandel dentin we can see interglobular dentin. So this is circumpulpal dentin, this is the mantle dentin, just below the mantle dentin uh, we can see uh, in circumpulpal dentin the interglobular dentin which is seen just below mantle dentin. Next we have Tom's granular layer which is different from Tom's process. Tom's process was seen in enamel formation, the ameloblastic uh, processes which is involved in the production of tooth enamel but this is Tom's granular layer so there is a zone which is adjacent to cementum that appears granular okay so near to cementum okay so when in the root dentine when it is near to cementum we have a granular layer which is known as Tom's granular layer which is like increases in amount from cemento enamel junction to the root apex okay so it changes it increases from uh, cemento enamel junction from uh, uh, the CEJ to root apex so it is caused by coalescing and looping of the terminal portions of terminal portions of dentinal tubules that is Tom's granular layer don't get confused Tom's process in enamel Tom's granular layer in dentin. So that is all about uh, various structures, various types of dentin. So we have covered peritubular dentin, which is adjacent to tubules, intertubular dentin between the peritubular dentin, predentin, which is a uh, first formed dentin and on endoplastic process which is cytoplasmic extension primary dentine and secondary dentine which is the mandel dentine secondary dentine and the tertiary dentine which is the reparative dentine on process pathological or operative procedures mantle and circumpulpal dentine mantle, is, mantle dentine is adjacent to DEJ and the remaining portion is circumpulpal dentine because it has uh, towards the pulpal side okay and interglobular dentine and we have incremental lines which is similar to incremental lines of rexius in enamel contour lines of oven which is accentuated lines of incremental lines and tom's granular layer which is adjacent to cementum there will be a granular layer so that's all about uh, the various types of dentin next we have a few theories uh, of uh, the innovation of dentin and some of the physical and chemical properties and innovation part of dentine uh, i'll come up with so i'll come up with innovations and physical and other properties of dentine in my next video thank you